and welcome to ET Studios HR Connect in association with ETHR World. I'm your host Himanshi Tiwari. Now in this episode of HR Connect series, we're going to dive deep into the world of HR automation and technology in talent management while exploring some key areas such as performance management systems, DNI, L&D, employee value propositions, future of work and much more. We are joined in by two distinguished panelists, Rajesh Rai, CHRO Global Logic and Shantanu Dhar, CHRO Hindustan Power. Now, thank you gentlemen for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you both here. So without any further ado and with great pleasure, I would like to start this discussion by asking you, Rajesh, let's discuss the role of uh, technology in talent management and how it has evolved over the years. And if you see some emerging trends uh, that are coming in uh, this domain, what would that be? Yes, yes. Lots of thank you, first of all, for the opportunity and lots of new trends. Uh, I come from a tech company. so. I can relate to the topic very well. I come from Global Logic, a Hitachi Group company. And what I have seen across is um, there is a lot of data, there is a lot of insights, um, there is a lot of trend mapping, there's a lot of predictive analysis of things that we do, uh, which are related to talent. Uh, and these could be how your skills are moving uh, as, as trends change. This could be talent and uh, data insights on performance management. This could be enablers like we use Metaverse for onboarding, right? So instead of a regular paper pen model, it's a gamified version of welcoming employees. Uh, this could be um, benefits that you can really introduce, communications that you can do on digital media. Uh, I think technology today really enables uh, all employees to get all the information they want uh, on their fingertips. And that is very useful because and the other piece that technology has helped us, especially, is the personalization of uh, what an employee wants, right? So if somebody may be interested in a faster career uh, and also doing, say, corporate social responsibility, today technology enables that employee to get a lot of information from us uh, to <coughs> help the employee achieve what they're wanting to do uh, as part of their aspiration. So a huge change and more change to come with Gen AI coming in and taking center stage. And that's where that's what we are working on uh, now to make sure that talent management and Gen AI, how can we use them together uh, for maximum benefit? When it comes to hybrid working in the remote culture, especially post COVID, so I'm sure technology, uh, you know, might help in kind of uh, easing out the processes. But how do you maintain the this culture angle that you're talking about? Technology in a hybrid space has been a a, a brilliant enabler, yeah. first of all, True. right? Like we, we guys use the G Suite and collaborating on documents or presentations you're making on the G Suite is so easy, right? <clears throat> uh, it's so, but from the cultural perspective, you have to get to training managers and supervisors and employees as yeah. well of what does it really mean to uh, engage somebody uh, in a virtual mode, like you know, in this hybrid mode. And uh, I always say that take care of the moments that matter, mm -hmm. even in a hybrid mode, because uh, look, an employee is a human, right? Mm -hmm. And we are all human. We we'll all need social connections, sure. no matter how much we want to stay home mm -hmm. or not come in a hybrid. Uh, and that's what we did. So what we did was we trained the entire line of leaders, supervisors, everybody. Mm -hmm. And we kept training them, even during the pandemic time, saying these are the things not to do. These are the things to do. Look out for these... Uh, these, uh, you know, um, things like how is the employee feeling? What is going on in their head at this point of time sitting away from you and from the, you can't see them every day. So I think the cultural element comes there, but technology is a blessing there. Yeah. Imagine without technology, you can't have a, uh, you can't have any calls. You yeah. can't do anything, right? Yeah. So it's been a blessing. And what's your opinion on the personalization angle? Because when we are talking about human touch, uh, even personalization angle helps a lot. Now with technology, do you feel uh, it has enhanced the whole decision making process when it comes to managing talent pools or uh, any other system for that matter? Yes. So how do you uh, so see this scenario? I think almost 60 to 70 percent of our leaders, leadership roles get filled internally right, by, by GL. And there is a method to that madness and the method is personalization. It takes a lot of effort, but technology helps us in making sure that employees have access to 
the latest learning systems. We have about 13 plus academies where employees are continuously upskilling themselves. There is a host of technical certifications. There is a digital ecosystem that's uh, on learning, mm -hmm. which you can adopt uh, at any given point of time. And um, plus we have these data insights on their performance, right? Uh, in fact, the L&D teams, HR teams, and the business teams, they get together to a point where they discuss threadbare, person by person, of what they have access to and how they can navigate their career within Global Logic. Now that is how personalization has helped us. So I'm a really big uh, proponent of personalization for an employee, saying let them grow their career the way they like mm. rather than the way we like. Right. And that's what we do at GL. Um, I think technology has been, a, again, a blessing because they have access to so much today uh, that in if, if it wasn't for technology, we wouldn't have been able to uh, do all of this. Yeah, so uh, when it comes to uh, talent management, like you said, uh, internal hiring uh, has helped you a lot. Now, succession and merit planning also comes into picture at this point. So how do you see technology facilitate your decision making when it comes to succession and merit planning? Well, uh, two things. One is uh, definitely a lot of data insights. Uh, how has the performance been over a period of time? What are some of the trends uh, that we look at? Um, so a lot of insights. And as I said, now with Gen AI coming, as we speak, we're actually developing a system where employees would be able to choose their careers through this digital landscape, through Gen AI, right? So, um, so data insights is one. Second is th those data insights will give you trends and priorities, right? And then you know what to focus on. And that's where the human intervention right. comes in. So it's a mix and match of both. Succession is not a straight line, like technology alone can never do it. Yeah, yeah. Right, so technology helps us with a lot of insights, trends, um, analytics, hmm. uh, sometimes even predictive. Right, right, and then you have the human intervention to see, okay, what fits our need uh, of building uh, leaders of the future. And right. we've been on that journey. We we are on a three x and a five x journey. So we are doing this like every every single day, every single week. Right, we are investing in our in building those future leaders through this combined approach. All right, basically maintaining a balance between the human angle and technology. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. right. So now, Shantanu, let's know from you. Uh, when we talk about performance management system, it's a big part of uh, this domain that we are talking about. Uh, now, performance management system uh, has actually seen a major acceleration in terms of technology. The systems have revamped and how, especially post-pandemic. So let's know from you how in your company or how companies should actually use HR technology or harness HR technology to kind of revamp their performance management system and how technology can actually help in uh, such systems. Okay, so let's first understand, you know, um, why, why, why performance management? So, um, you know, you can't really measure the output of uh, management staff. That's why, you know, we give them something called a compensation. So what's a compensation? Compensation is I'm compensating you for the time that you're spending in the organization, right? That's why, and that's the main reason why you have these swiping and these, you know, retina and, and et cetera and all of that. It measures the time. While wages is different, you know, what you give to the, to the, to the workmen is because you can measure their output very easily. I mean, it's not to generate kya, itne bags of cement, banaya, you know, and, and, and so on and so forth. So performance management, a good performance management system, for example, you know, I'm a big fan of the balance scorecard, right? Should not, should not measure your day-to-day -day activities because the fixed portion of your compensation is, is compensating you to do your, for, for what you do, your day-to-day -day activities. So, the impact of that has to be on the variable of what you do over and above your day-to-day -day activities, which, is, which has a direct linkage to the company's strategy. So st strategy could be very simple. Profitability has to be up by about 15%, right? Should be. What is it, those three, those, those actions amongst those, those, those four quadrants that you're going to take, which are measurable, observable, et cetera, that is going to you know, make you achieve that, which will help the company achieve its uh, strategy. The strategy which is then linked to the vision, vision statement, etc. The vision statement. Where does technology come in? Technology comes in in linking that work which you're going to do directly with the company strategy. Okay, and that's a fantastic thing because that I wouldn't leave to to two people because that's that's a, that's a, that's a number game. 
right? That's that's a simple. Even if you have a project management team, they have to get you know a chimney up by a particular time, so that you're able to you know so that all the the the, 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 the regulatory framework which is there as far as your pollution is is, is concerned, okay. You've got all of those things done within that that period of time. Else, your plant, you know, you you will be fined, etc., and so on and so forth. So, technology can come in. Technology is uh, I, I I I I would use it there to make that linkage very very clear. The other aspect is of performance management is like I'm a big fine a fan of having two cycles. One cycle is completely based upon your balance scorecard, outcome of which is only on the variable pay, nothing else. No other decision is actually taken. The other is your competency development. Okay, that, that's where you know, like for example, I'm a big fan of the new competency assessment modules, which are completely AI based. Right? They ask you a few questions, you answer that, right? And then it, it calculates and says, okay, you know, this is these are these are your your strengths. Okay, these are the areas of of of, of development. The impact of that portion of the appraisal is on the increment. And on the on the career, so technology can play a big role in these two activities. I'm very passionate about that. Oh wow, lovely! I mean, uh, now talking about AI. Uh, so how do you see now AI is changing the whole talent management scenario? And with chatbots, Chat GPT, Metaverse, everything coming in, how do you see you know the work uh, culture or work scenario scenario is going to change in the coming uh, years? And where will uh, the human angle of HR be? See, one great thing that uh, Chat GPT and these bots, etc., has done that it's freed up HR people from doing everyday drudgery kind of work. Transaction. Yeah, this, this, it's, it's freed up there. I mean, I love to see my team that they have the time now to get into to development work. And that's that's a big, huge motivator. You know, otherwise, I mean, I mean, during my hour days, you know, somebody wanted to leave, they would come there. I mean, every day you're just, you know, doing transaction after transaction after transaction. There's a memo being signed and all of that. Even when I was in HCL, it used to happen. I remember in HCL we had first come up with uh, the uh, with an animated, um, you know. So there was a big joke that there was this animated, you know, young lady. You could ask questions to her and all of that. And um, so uh, one day, you know, our, the HR head of HCL America came, and he asked me, "Who's the person behind this animated lady?" So I said, "It's a guy called George Verghese, who had this big beard and all of that." <laughs> so, but yeah, you know, you know, we 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 went there. So essentially, what it does is, first of all, it's ease, right? You just interact with that uh, bot or you interact with that AI and you say, I need leave or I need to take a loan. I need to take an advance. I need to go here. I need to travel here, et cetera. And that then interacts, et cetera. And there you get your, your, your travel ticket. You know, you get the thing. It calculates how much uh, advance you can take and all of that. And it leaves HR out of it, you know, with those millions of paperwork and all of that. Yeah. And that leaves your HR team to get more and more developed, you know, where they where they start doing real, I mean, for lack of a better word, real HR work, <laughs> which is the development portion of it. Because yeah. by alma mater is ITC. I've, I've even worked for Walmart in the US. Uh, I think companies like a Walmart or an ITC, they understand what employee engagement truly is. An employee will get engaged if they see that the company is willing to take a stand for your development. Like in ITC, we used to have in those days a minimum 15 days of training you have to do, which used to be in your boss's KRA. Oh. Not in my KRA. <laughs> the works manager had that, you know, that, that you have to ensure that everybody reporting to you is doing a minimum of 15 days of training in a, in a, in a month. So I think, yeah, these are the areas where AI will really help. And is helping. All right, Rajesh, let's get you in this as well. Talking about the transaction elements of HR and how uh, AI is going to help. But with AI, we have seen a lot of automation horrors, right? Uh -huh. With respect to attendance systems or uh, salary lapses. Yeah. So how do you see, I mean, uh, how can we mitigate those risks while u no, using look, technology? I, I fundamentally believe it will evolve. It's, it's yeah. too early uh, and the world is figuring it out but they would be able to figure it out and really eliminate the non-value adding transactional pieces where you're collating a lot of information and there could be manual errors there, right? So the beauty of AI is that it can help you do that, right? What you do with that information is then the human side of things. While it will also provide you with analytics and data insights, like we have 
like on performance management, several uh, AI based click clickable, customizable uh, dashboards, right, which will give you a sense of how your live performance is happening, right? It will tell you in numbers. Uh, so I think uh, the world will progress, it will evolve, um, but it is a very powerful tool to get to intelligent decision making on most talent subjects, right. right? Earlier it was all about getting a lot of data together, a lot of information manually together and then drawing up on Excels or G suites, uh, G sheets, the charts and trends and all that, all that gets eliminated. Today you have the data with you, now what are you going to do with that is what Gen AI is going to, you know, sort of facilitate. But with the use of AI and, uh, and analytics, uh, the concern of data privacy and security also comes in. Yeah, so how does. do you see that concern and how companies can actually mitigate that concern while uh, harnessing such technologies? Uh, it's also data privacy, it is biased to an extent. Uh, but uh, the way I see it is that um, you, the, the way Gen AI has to be deployed has to be customized to you. Like what we are doing at Global Logic is customized to us which means we are not going to a public platform right. and using data that's available anywhere. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. Also because we work for clients and we are very careful about data privacy right. and confidentiality. So you just cannot do that. But you can always develop solutions the way we are doing for your own, for your own self and for your own use. And likewise something that we do for our clients as well. Now that is a protected system, yeah. right? So you're using the technology to harness the same system, right? Internal systems and get you the data and get you the insights with whatever you want to do. Right. So that's how you take care of data privacy. And um, well, bias is a bit of a complex subject because while you can say, you know, we can eliminate bias, but bias never 100% yeah, gets bias. eliminated, right? And possibly there some human intervention is always required yeah. to make sure that you're taking the right set of actions. Yeah, e even AI comes with inherent biases. That's <laughs> right, so that's where you sort of train your managers, leaders to be very, very careful. Like we have more than 1500 of our leaders who are trained mm. uh, to interview, right? Mm. To, to, uh, talking about what Shantanu said that you just cannot eliminate, just because right. there's technology, you can't eliminate a culture fit interview or an interaction, mm. right? So they're trained so that they don't get into bias, right? So likewise, so I think Gen AI and human centric uh, intervention go hand in hand. Yeah, but I'm sure that works for a tech company like you. <laughs> Let's talk about Hindustan Power. Uh, I mean, how such technologies are going to help or for Hindustan Power, what's the percentage of technology and human angle? So let's not talk about Hindustan Power. Let's talk about, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the core industry, yeah. right? So let's talk about, say, power companies or coal companies or uh, steel, yeah. you know, cement, etc. I think uh, there is only so much that you can do as far as tech is, is, is concerned. These are very, very people uh, intensive. I'm talking about people intensive, I'm not talking about from a numbers perspective. Yeah. Right? Naturally, we can't have the kind of numbers which he would have or, you know, an, an HCL would have. But the, the people that work there are very highly skilled, right? So, for example, if you are working in a cement organization, other than finance or HR, everybody else is a cement professional. Right. So same way for the for the power industry also. Like everybody is an expert, you know, uh, brings a certain amount of expertise in the power industry, including maybe like for example cement. Uh, one of the major uh, exclusive hot skill out there is project management. Yeah. Right. How fast can you set up a 3.5 ton cement plant in 18 months flat? Right. I mean, you have equipment over there. Uh, which are the world's largest parts of industrial equipment, you know, transporting all of that, setting it up, yeah. right? Um, the kin, uh, the heat in the, in, in, inside the kin is one, is uh, around one third the surface of the sun. So you're talking about that kind of thing. The other thing is safety, right? People working in a software development center, okay, I mean, other than, God forbid, a fire or something happening, you know, but here the safety matter is huge. You, it's just huge. I mean, you can have a blast at any, any any point of time. You can have a silo where a person is walking by and gets buried in it. You know, it's like, so AI, you know, AI can only give you certain protocols in these kind of matters. There you need the human feet on the ground. And not just, you know, not just the supervisors or the, or the, or the HODs, the plant head, the HR head, everybody, for example, 
uh, whenever I've worked for a manufacturing organization, I have gone to the, to, the, to the manufacturing locations for at least three to minimum three days a month. You know, maximum, I mean, uh, even 10 to 15 days a month. Especially if there's a new, new, new project happening, right? Where does AI come into it? It doesn't, you have to be there, yeah. you know, feet on the ground. Um, have I answered your question? Yeah, okay. very uh, rightly so. So uh, when we uh, talk about your experience, you've worked in ITC, HCL, now you are here in Hindustan Power and I'm sure a lot of other places. But how has been your uh, experience over the years as an HR person and how has been the evolution of HR now that we are talking about technology from where it started when you started? Okay, good question. I mean... Uh, <laughs> Um, when I let, let's let's start with Walmart. You know, I I I, mean, I, I studied at, at Pittsburgh State, and I, I I was hired as a as a management trainee for for Walmart. So I I I went for my management trainee program, thinking you know retail hair, you know you got to do stack shelves and all of that. And on the very first day, Rick Rubicum, who was my uh, who was my 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 training uh, head, he was the the, the store my, the, the store head, and he said that what is Walmart's core competence. So I was like, you know, it's, I try to be smart and you know say that it was about selling items. He said, no, the core competence is technology. And he said, do you know that other than IBM and probably another company, Walmart was the only company that had its own satellite in space. I am talking about 1995, wow. right? In those days, Walmart had the technology, like if you were to buy this pen, Right, and it you swipe it, okay. It would send a signal to the uh, satellite saying that store 41, this kind of a pen has been sold. Replenish the next morning at 5 a.m. It oh, would be wow. replenished. Okay, so that's this the kind 95. of 95, right? I know I'm old, so <laughs> okay. So that's the kind of technology that uh, Walmart had at that at, at, at that point of time. The dependence on technology was very high. So the core. I mean, that's what, and that was an eye opener for me. That the world's largest retailer says, my core competency is technology, right? And that's what enables me to run these stores. I went back, interesting, um, 2019, uh, I, I was in, 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 in California and Detroit for about a week, and I took a week off to go back to my university. I stayed with my professor, Dr. Mark Johnson, and I said, let's go to Walmart. In the same Walmart where I used to work. And I was shocked. There were no store plugs there. Anymore. Oh, no store clerks. Only technology handling. Yes, you know, we went there, we bought stuff. It just came out. We swiped it. You know, we paid and and and, and we walked out. Okay, so that's what you know. That's yeah. cool. Now, when I came back to India and I rejoined ITC, I was in ITC before I had gone for my masters, and I was in the in the Munger plant. I was in the packaging and printing division. In those days, each of us were given Macs. Right. That, and in, in those days, I mean, of course, you know, um, um, we used to, in those days, India didn't have coated board. What is coated board? Coated board is, um, it is basically paper board mm -hmm. in which the ink does not run. Okay. We didn't have the technology that, I mean, Patachalam paper boards started making it later on. We used to import coated board from Europe. I think it was from Norway. Okay. You're talking about each bale okay. was one ton. Okay. So these bales had to be brought via uh, vessels via ships okay. and then they had to be transported all the way to Munger. What enabled that? Technology. Technology. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about uh, 1996, 1997. Technology enabled that. And then as ITC as, as, a, as a company has always been, I remember 89 when I joined them, uh, we had a software called BOSS, Branch Ordering Software System. So basically, those days, you know, we were marketing supervisors, so we would go to our, our sections. I was managing, um, uh, you know, North Bengal at the point of time, including Bhutan and uh, Sikkim. So physically, you had to go and map each and every route to say how many pan ke dukan, how many shops are there, where, you know, your cigarettes will be sold. We used to come back there and enter that in the branch or in the, in, 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 in the boss system, branch ordering software system. Those days, it would take us up to three days to be able to fill it. Yeah, yeah. Right, that would then would then give the factories how much production they have to make brand wise. Right, then that the, the factory would then send that details through the branch ordering system to the <laughs> to the entire supply chain management, 
okay, who would then set off the, 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 the trucks, the rakes, etc., you know, which, which they would go. The point I'm trying to make is technology, if you see any company that has grown, whether in India or abroad, they have invested enormously in technology, right? Those who haven't yeah. are not there anymore. Yeah. yeah, they're not there anymore. Sorry, I gave you, I wanted to give you a non HR response in this, okay, so. <laughs> with, uh, let's know from Rajesh also, how about your experience with respect to HR over the years? I think one thing that has definitely changed has been um, uh, employee experience has always been the center stage, but the definition of employee experience today is far more digital combined with human right. Uh, intervention, right? So, and I come in from consulting, uh, Arthur Anderson Day is later Ernst & Young, um, and having worked with a lot of clients at that time also, the tech focus was always there, right? So at that time, we would implement even ERPs or um, uh, or make custom solutions, right, for, uh, for, uh, for our clients. But the base was always tech because that would alleviate uh, uh, the experience right. of the clients as well as of the employees. But after that, I've worked with uh, a lot of uh, companies like Expedia as an example, right? Um, and Expedia is an e-commerce company, mm -hmm. right? And the entire base is technology, right? Uh, for travel, right? And, and, and amazing travel, like you get the best of deals there. Right, um, they are they are also a consortium of a lot of companies. Uh, for those of uh, uh, for those people who know Expedia well, so again the base was technology. I worked with Adobe, and they have some oh, of the yeah. best products right in the tech space uh, in the industry even today. And their if you go through their evolution of products, again, absolutely amazing mm. and outstanding. Right. So, so to Shantanu's point, I think technology has always been right at the yeah. center. Yeah. What it does to HR, and then I was part of Accenture, at, you know, and, and Accenture was at scale, like yeah. you know, uh, many thousands and lakhs of employees right. in India. You cannot reach those employees if you don't have technology Correct. as the base. It's impossible, right? Reaching, say, 300,000 employees is impossible. Yeah. So tech plays a very important role. For HR, now, I think it's a great opportunity because you can use uh, technology, again, Gen AI could be one, one means, yeah. but you have many other ways uh, in which you can use technology to uh, build your reach, to communicate to your employees, give them personalized approaches for careers, for their upskilling. And I'll give you an example. We very recently uh, at GL, at Global Logic, implemented a parental care solution wow. called from Yoda. Okay, Yoda Care, you yeah, can yeah. Google it. Now, there are many times that uh, as as uh, sons and daughters, we are not, as children, we are not close to our parents and they're alone and mm. they might need some emergency help, mm. right? Now, this app really enables parents to get that emergency help within a trusted network just at the click of a button. Mm. Now, that's possible only because there is technology, right. right? And now, as I said, we are developing the solution for our employees where they can enter a few details and actually configure a career path for themselves, mm. saying, okay, maybe these are the three, four options or five options I can consider if I want to really build my career at GL, at Global Logic. So I think we've come a long way, but this phase is a very creative phase for HR, to be honest, mm. right? We can use all the technology of that that's coming in uh, and use it to our benefit. And um, I've always considered HR as a really big contributor to the PNL. And I think these are ways and means. The minute you retain your talent, the minute you upskill them for bigger roles, mm. what you're doing indirectly is really contributing right. to the PNL, right? So this is, in my head, this is a very, very good age for uh, people professionals. They must, and it's a must, they must use technology to, uh, to enhance, alleviate the employee experience they are wanting to give to their people. Yeah, like Shantanu said, I mean, you cannot do away with technology. No, no, no. Uh, for a few companies, it might be their core competency, but I think it stands true for most of the companies now. I don't know who said in my one of my companies, somebody said that today every company is a technology company, yeah, it is. irrespective yeah. of which sector yeah. you are in. So I think, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, so we've already spoken about the past. Let's uh, discuss about the future of work. So how do you see technologies changing the future of work? Now we have already seen a hybrid and remote setting. What else are you expecting in terms of a future of work I and technology? I feel that some, um, so definitely transactional work over a period of time will go away is how I see it. 
or will come down if it doesn't completely go away because technology will take center stage. The other thing that I see is that uh, with all the data, the information, the, the insights, the predictability, uh, numbers, all of that, trends, all of that, uh, decision making would be uh, again very intelligent and informed. Uh, not eliminating the human intervention. So what is going to happen is that possibly some roles and in some industries would get reconfigured to do more intelligent work as opposed to some transactional work that they may be doing right now. So the future of work as I see is that this transformation will happen. It may not happen immediately because it's too early to say that. But over the next about few years, this transformation is definitely imminent. So what is in it for people is to make sure that their upskilling and learning agenda is forefront. That you just cannot survive without uh, being in tune with what skills you need in the coming horizon. Say another three years and let's let, the horizons are shorter, right? Three years, two years, one year, five years. Those are the kind of horizons I'm talking about. Sometimes in the tech industry, the horizon can also be six months, right? Yeah. So uh, depending on which industry you are in, I think the need to upskill, the need to stay market relevant is very, very important. Something that we do at Global Logic, I mean, we, because maybe we are tech, right. so the need is even far more. Like, you know, I'll tell you my own leaders, every Friday, 8 a.m. to 12 noon, four hours, they used to learn from each other. It was peer-to-peer -peer learning. Globally, they would get together. And the reason why would they would do that is because the pace of change in mm. tech is so fast, yeah. right? So we would discuss what have we done for different clients? What are the new technologies coming in? How can we get proficient? How can we be ahead of the curve, right? right? Now, if you were to get the same uh, example for a fellow employee in any, any sector, they should follow that for themselves as well. So the need for upscaling, staying market relevant will be even more important now uh, as far as future of work goes. All right, now we talk about tech companies uh, and you're talking about upskilling and being market re uh, relevant. So what do you prefer as a tech company? It's skills versus experience. I mean, you uh, opt skills. for skills or experience? <laughs> well, skills applied to get experience. Wow, right? that's a wonderful answer. Right? The, the reason, and this comes directly from experience, that it's very easy. So Global Logic believes in build versus buy always, right? We, we are very high on that. And it helps because you may be a certification, uh, you may have got a Python certification or something or DevOps or any other tech skill. Till the time you really know how to apply it, your experience is not there. True. It's just an academic uh, you yeah, know, thing, true. right? So that, so skill applied to get that experience is very, very important. And that is where our focus should be. That's something that we measure as well, uh, as far as performance goes for employees, but that is the key. So I have another point about the future, if I may. Yeah. So if I look at a tech-enabled future, I'm seeing a few trends which are very interesting. The number of gig workers today are actually growing. Yeah. Right. Wow. Now, um, in, in my time, I've written a, a few, few skill, you know, film scripts and all of that. I've got friends in the, in the film industry. It's a complete gig, gig economy. Yeah. The OTT, the film industry, yeah. you know, it's complete. They're, they're very bright kids, right? They'll come there, work on a project for about three to six months, yeah. take a break for three months, you know, start off uh, another project. So what I am seeing is, see, today, uh, the transformation that still has to happen in the corporate world is from cooperation to collaboration. Right now, as humans, we run a corporate world full of collaboration. So what is collaboration? It, it basically means that you know, somebody can be working in, in London, somebody can be working in Bihar, somebody could be working in Bombay, and they're all cooperating to get, get, a, get, get, a, get a job done. Like, like I gave you an example of bales coming in from Norway, etc. That's all cooperation. Now in cooperation, what happens is, the, in cooperation, it happens like this. Um, I'm giving my 100%, I expect 100%, but I get 90%. Hey, but that's human nature. The moment I get 90%, I start giving 80%. The moment he sees or she sees, hey, that's 80%, she'll give 70%, 60, 50, 40. it breaks down at some point of time, right? The, so the conversations break down only because of cooperation. I think tech as an enabler will bring us to the next level, which is collaboration. And collaboration is something which we have not yet achieved, in, in my opinion. I think collaboration is when I am on your side, right? 
I do things for you like I do things for my own children without expecting anything in, in return. I'm not saying that we should have a patriarchal or a matriarchal setup in the workplace, but it, it becomes that here's my expertise okay, I'm, and I'm going to give you my 100% at each time. And that can happen only through, through tech. But that will truly happen when employees stop feeling, you know, stop feeling that they are being exploited by, by organizations. You ask any employee, you know, I'm exploited. <laughs> Why is that? Let's go a little bit deep into, into that particular thought. See, human thought is, is the least researched uh, subject in this world. Right? It's only Edward de Bono who wrote, you know, the, the, the five, yeah, the six thinking hats. And till about three years ago, only three or four American universities even offered a credit on, on human thought. We don't understand that. You're taking human beings, you're saying, you know, get a degree. You're bundling them into a closed room for eight and a half, nine hours per day, five days a week, the best time of the week, the best time of the day, the best time of their life. You are actually putting them into something which the human brain sees as a, for the want of a better word, a jail. Right? And so they do it day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, looking forward to a Saturday and Sunday. Right? And on a, on a, on a Sunday night, they're like, oh, God, I got to go back to work. I think technology, what it will do is, one of the wonders I want technology to actually do is to cut down that amount of, of time. Okay, enable employees, instead of working five days, six day weeks, we work normally six day weeks, our plans run seven days. Cut that down to three days, four days. Can technology do that? I feel, not, maybe not in my lifetime, or maybe during my lifetime, uh, my children's lifetime definitely, they will see a tech enabled work where you know, the majority of the workforce is gig based, right? They will not be putting in the kind of hours my generation or his generation, your generation is actually putting in. Work-life balance is much, much better. And they're working three to four days a week. But that would be utopia. And no, no, this start has already been I'm made. I'm already yes, manifesting I, this future now that you yeah, have said. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, this start has already been made because we do work with clients yeah. where, let's say, previously you would do a say a construction work manually, right? right? You would read a manual and you would go step by step by step. Yeah. Now, all of that is available as a DIY. And you open the app, it will exactly tell you what measurements to take yeah, or what yeah. to do, and you just go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so different than the previous world. Yeah. So I think a good start has been made yeah. and we hope that it will bring in more of yeah. the utopia that Shantanu just spoke yeah. about. All right, brilliant. That was such a good conversation, gentlemen. But before ending this conversation, we have just introduced a rapid fire round. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we would uh, like to know the answers from you. So quick answers in Koki Insights. Yes. Yeah. So Shantanu, let's start from you. If not HR, then what? I would have been an author full time. <laughs> I am very sure about that. <laughs> now I'm sure too. <laughs> I could have been a lot of things. Maybe, uh, maybe a vocalist, maybe a... Uh, um, an author, uh, a painter for sure. I paint a lot. So yeah, these three things all combined into one. Then what's your work-life motto in a nutshell? Um, you know, uh, work out, go to, go to work, you know, five days a week and uh, spend time with my wife uh, during weekends and our, and our close friends. I think we've been mom and dad for too long. <laughs> now we are empty nesters. So it's, 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 it's time to be husband and wife again. You know, so that's what I, I, I look for during weekends, you know. Yeah, and you, Rajesh? Oh, well, just work hard, live and let live. I think that's my motto always. Live and let live. Yeah. So uh, you play the role of HR when you are in the office. What's after office? What role do you play when you are outside of the office? Uh, a very well uh, trained and obedient husband. <laughs> 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 With the 26 six years of marriage, I am sure you are saying it, right? No, I, I, I stop being an HR guy the moment I step out of the office. Oh, it's very similar for me. I have no, no HR after you've left the office. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. An obedient husband, uh, a father, yeah. a friend, many other roles, right? Um, uh, but definitely not HR outside. Yeah. All right. So what's the wackiest employee who you have heard in your HR role over these years? Thank you to go first. Yeah, I think it was uh, the late Mr. S. Raman, the founder of HCL Tech. Uh, he passed away in 2010, was like a father figure to me. I reported to him directly. He never believed in management science. I mean, you talk management science with him, 
he would literally throw the book out of, uh, you know, the, the, the window. So he used to have this really quirky habit. He would walk around the software development center and talk to people. And then he will say that, and that's what he, he did to me also, like, how long have you been working here? What are the main things you have done? What have you achieved? Okay, you're reporting to me from tomorrow on. <laughs> so he used to do that, you know, because he, he, he basically believed, he didn't believe in hierarchy and structure and all of that. Yeah, that you know, work has to, be, has to be done. And if I feel that you're the guy, uh, so for example, way back in 2000, I'm talking about 2001, 2002. I was in my early 30s, two small kids, and uh, he just, he said, okay, you report to me, and then he, one day he says, uh, we need to build continental Europe, you do it. <laughs> it was like that. Um, tremendous amount of empowerment, and all successes are yours, failures used to be his. I miss that man, I miss it, it was a father figure to me. Yeah, for me, it's Mr. Ennis Rajan. You may know him. Uh, oh, Ennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I worked with him when he was a partner at EY. And yeah. then later on, he became Mr. Mystery's executive team yeah. member as well. I think the best part of his is uh, he would absolutely give you all the empowerment, but leave that little room for you to sort of develop yourself. Right. Right. And that could be a feedback moment. It could be... Uh, and he likes these, he, he has written a book, I uh, forget the name of the book, but absolutely quirky, wacky one-liners, right? Uh, our good fortune, my good fortune, that I used to get to listen to those one-liners in person. <laughs> but he's written a book, so you can actually buy that book now. And it's, they're wonderful. He posts those on LinkedIn as well. And every time I love it. Um, like, for example, I still remember one very vivid moment. So we were, we were uh, submitting a proposal and... Uh, you know, we were just at, I think 2.30 was the time and we were at 2.25 and the lift wasn't coming and I think it was on the 8th floor or ninth floor of the client. So what I did was I said, sir, I will go. And I went. So I climbed up. Ooh. So, and then he, so I submitted, nick of time, done. And then he comes with this big chocolate and uh, with a one-liner saying it pays to be fit. <laughs> and he hands it over to me, right? So, I, I mean, just a amazing pleasure to be with him around him to listen to him uh, and of course to be in touch he was an amazing mentor but a very wacky uh, yeah. hr professional never conforming to the norms mm -hmm. and that's what we guys learned from him his batchmate uh, ravi shankar was my boss in his ah, okay <laughs> another quirky guy <laughs> I'm sure. Now, thank you, gentlemen, for this conversation. It was a brilliant conversation. We have spilled some beans on being good husbands <laughs> and good fathers. We, we try have, to. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we've spoken about how technology has uh, evolved in these, these few years, your experiences and everything. Thank you so much for your time. It was a wonderful conversation. Thanks for having, having me over.